praise the name of the Lord hallelujah we are in the days of his power and that means everything that attempts to mock God in your life he must give up this night in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray for someone already again I say everything that represents shame and reproach in the name of Jesus the Son of the Living God it lets you go now and anyone who has told you where is your God may your testimony be the answer may your testimony be the answer may your testimony be the answer in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 it says we are his workmanship you want to understand that scripture you have to look at someone who is a professional a craftsman when the Bible says we are his workmanship that means the tool that he uses whether it's a, a carpenter's workmanship is his saw and all the things that he uses so when the Bible says we are his workmanship it means every time God wants to make a statement he looks around until he finds you then he does something to your life that lifts you like a trophy I declare that God is announcing someone it may look to you like I'm just making an empty statement but in the name of Jesus I declare my God I don't know about your God but my God will announce you in the name of Jesus Christ and for those who are about giving up wondering is God really alive because it looks like I've prayed it looks like I'm, I've fasted. It looks like I've, I've opened up my heart, but I'm yet to see the manifestation of God. Let me tell you the truth. When God begins with you, when God begins to honor you, it will be non-stop honor and victory. Non-stop honor and victory. In the name of Jesus. For many years, Anna cried for a child, but when Samuel came, Samuel was the one who anointed the kings in Israel. I'm praying for you. While you are crying for a child, may God give you a nation. In the name of Jesus. We are here, Lord, because we believe you. You never call the seed of Jacob to seek you in vain. We have come with our hearts opened. We pray in the name of Jesus, let the devil be put to shame over our lives tonight. In the name of Jesus, let us see once again the manifestation of your victory in our lives. We open up our hearts to receive tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. week after week let me announce to you that something is happening in your life the bible says now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear hallelujah you must carry this consciousness that every time i come before the lord something is happening to my spirit man something is happening to my mind and that means something is happening to everything around me in the name of jesus christ hallelujah as always I will encourage you to be very attentive to the word this is the part of the service that the devil does not like because the entrance of his word gives light and the Bible declares that it gives understanding to the simple and so when the word of God is about to come all kinds of demonic distractions begin it is your responsibility to insist that I will concentrate I will open up my heart and my spirit to hear hallelujah it is always the hearing of faith and the working of miracles the hearing that produces faith and the working of miracles the only channel the only platform for communicating Bible faith is the Word of God it means outside of an encounter with the Word of God the believer cannot have the faith 
that produces. Hallelujah. More than the information you will be hearing, it's important to realize that the Word of God carries with it an impartation. The Holy Spirit is not moving around this wonderful auditorium and across everyone listening for nothing. When His Word comes, with His Word is His Spirit bringing performance and bringing confirmation to His Word. The Bible says, and the Lord walking with them confirming the word with signs following may that be your testimony in the name of Jesus I came tonight with a very strong burden a very strong burden that has become an assignment from the Lord and oftentimes when God wants to plant compassion in me or holy anger if I would use that expression Usually, he will make reference to one of the many visions that he's given me. Something, I don't know if it's, if it's just a unique experience, but something happens to me every time the Lord brings to memory any of my visionary encounters. It seems to plant and refire faith in me again. And it looks like it's a strategy that he uses so that you can have a taste of the burden that is on his heart as far as releasing God's people in whatever area of concern, um, you know. And so it, it started even before we went to Zaria. And it was such a strong burden. And that burden has translated to the teaching that you'll be hearing tonight. And so let me request that you please lend me your attention. Tonight is a very prophetic service. Hallelujah. Very prophetic service. That means many things will be created in your life. That means many things that were not there are on their way coming. Yeah. It means many unwanted things in your life must be rooted out. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Freedom from financial captivity. Hmm. Luke chapter 4. Don't think this is a financial service at all. This is a prophetic, I told you already beforehand. We have a series coming as we always do and I'll be doing a lot of extensive teaching but tonight the Lord is coming with a rod and coming with fire. You will learn a lot of things but there are definite things that the Lord wants to do in our lives tonight. And for someone, your prayer and fasting is about to be answered because you have said, God, when will you visit me? Not knowing that while you were on your way to church, as you left home, you also left shame. As you left home, you also left reproach. As you left home, you left your yesterday and may it never come to your life again. In the name of Jesus Christ, for some of you, as you left home, you left the generational curse that has held everybody loving the Lord but living in poverty, loving the Lord but living in all kinds of reproach, no beauty and color in your life. In the name of Jesus, I stand representing the King of Kings. I declare that circle is broken once and for all. That circle is broken once and for all. That circle is broken once and for all. And for someone here that you have carried upon your forehead, like Cain, the statement written in cupboard, that everywhere you go, it becomes clear that it's like your lot is reproached. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, we wipe away that mark from off you. For a man of God here, for a church, for a business, for a family, it looks like everything has worked except these finances. And you are wondering, what is the key? What have we done wrong? In the name of Jesus Christ, may my God surprise you. Please be seated. And now, lend me your attention. Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. By the way, let me take a minute to celebrate a dear man of God. Venerable Ike, all the way from Onicha. Let's bless him with the Anglican communion. Bless you, sir. It's an honor to have you around. May God bless you. May God bless you. Please be seated.
Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. Luke 4 from verse 16. The Bible says, And as he came to Nazareth, Jesus now, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And the Bible says he stood up for to read, verse 17. And there was delivered unto him. I'm seeing the hands of people just catching fire. This is what I'm seeing. The hands of people catching fire. This is a manifestation of the spirit of poverty over many families. It may not be for everybody, but everyone who is represented in this vision, in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever has tied your hand or that of your loved ones, I hope you are not here just for yourself. You are also here as for me and my family. I declare, let that fire burn to ashes. Let that fire burn to ashes. Let that fire burn to ashes. Everything that is not the planting of God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Let's continue. The Bible says, There was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. What did he send me to do to the poor? To preach the gospel. The word poor there is also translated meek. When you read Isaiah's rendition of it. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. I like the next verse. The next sentence. To preach deliverance to the captives. Deliverance is not only conducted. It is preached. To preach deliverance. That means there is something the captive needs to hear that releases the power of God and translates to victory and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. 19. It says to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. 20. Now, the Bible says he closed the book and he gave it to the minister and he sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him. In other words, if you claim that this is why you are here, then we are watching. We are lending you our attention. The last verse now, 21 says, And he began to say unto them, This day, someone prophesied, say this day. Yeah. It will not be next week, it will not be tomorrow. He said, This day is this scripture. Now, you see, he said many things there. It is the assignment of your faith to choose the one that must manifest. He says, this day is this scripture. Whatever this scripture means for you, this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Hallelujah. Two visions very quickly, and then I'll begin to teach. The first vision that the Lord brought back to my mind that inspired this teaching this prophetic service tonight was the vision that would open me up to his call upon my life I have shared it a thousand times but I want you to pay attention I would just cut straight to the point because we have a lot to do so I was standing up a building like an elevated like a story building and I saw an endless sea of people in that vision it was a whole generation in that vision and the ones in front of me, as the, 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 the picture kept zooming, they began to cry. And I remember very clearly they said, there's no food and there's no water. And then I said, who is the cause? And they all pointed in unison, unanimously. I said, why would I do that? No food and no water. And he says, who is the cause? And they pointed to me. And I said, no, I would not do that. Then I had an assignment to deliver those people but I was afraid because in that vision it looked like some people had chased me into that closet but I made up my mind that I was going to go out all the same I said if I perish like Esther I perish as soon as I opened the door I met this giant gray bearded man that I know now is a representation of the Holy Spirit and he stretched his hands and I stretched back my tiny hands and placed it on him. 
and he said I will walk with you and then we began to move moving from one building to the other on our way down that's the vision number one and you know for a long time when you see that you would think it's just spiritual food and spiritual water alone but I believe that it is all encompassing whatever food represents food represents the basis for nourishment and sufficiency hallelujah so when I teach topics like this I'm not teaching as an advisor there is an anointing and a mantle that came are we together to teach what I am teaching number two in that vision I was standing ready to serve God's people and there was a machine you know very strangely the machine was mixing bread with honey and my assignment was to just cut a piece and serve the people automatically it was not me mixing it the machine you know how you put jam or blue band in between the bread it was doing it on its own and that machine you could not even see the end of it my assignment was just to stand it would churn out bread mixed with honey dripping honey from the bread it was dripping to the ground and people would taste of it and run and join the queue again I know I saw that happen many times and there was no such thing like you've been here before don't come again people would eat and run and they were calling their loved ones and saying come and the queue started elongating elongating and people were taking the bread and honey some will run back and stand on the queue others will have their loved ones come to join bread and honey listen ladies and gentlemen there are people who teach finances because of their passion to release people from lack and want and poverty and that is wonderful there are people who teach finances because they had an opportunity to study along the lines of finances and they are bringing their value and serving the body of Christ or serving you know society generally and that is profitable there are others who have become professionals by reason of their exposure to you know financial institutions and they feel that they have something to say but there are people who have been mandated with a mantle upon their head are we together now and God has given them an assignment among the many other things is to open the eyes of people so that they will see when you sit under this anointing and under those kinds of people I guarantee you regardless your experience if your heart is opened you will watch the wonder walking God lift you out of financial shame and reproach and may this be that night for you in the name of Jesus I have watched with sadness the limiting effect of being poor or financially incapacitated I know it like you know that it has affected preachers it has affected families listen carefully it has affected ministries it has affected nations it has affected government finance is one of the number one sponsors for compromise of character many people today who otherwise would have been worthy representations models for generations they survived every other temptation but they could not stand finances are we together now judas iscariot survived every other thing but when it came to the money issue he felt like a pack of card in fact one of the principal areas that would have brought embarrassment to the ministry of jesus was the issue of finances he was teaching doing the things that he was doing and the tribute collectors came and they began to embarrass him you claim to be a teacher of righteousness but you are owing the government you have not been able to pay your tax and that was a statement that would indict and embarrass him and put a stain upon his ministry and Jesus did something immediately to remedy that situation hallelujah among the many things that we were given as far as redemption is concerned is access to the blessing and the blessing of the Lord translates to all kinds of good things including freedom and deliverance from poverty this poverty thing is a very serious thing because while we have those who talk about it like an obsession very few have been able to profess solution and we have those who have avoided it and done so to their detriment
So we always have two groups of people when it has to do with the subject of poverty and finance. We have those who are overly obsessed. It looks like everything in their lives, everything as far as the communication of teachings and sermons is centered around money, 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 and, and that's the end of it. Then we have those who shy away from it using all kinds of religious guys and just say it does not matter. God will find a way of sorting you. You just love God. And many have done that for many years and now are only left with tears and shame let God be true and all men liars I'm saying it again I made a covenant with God that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant your spiritual vibrancy is my number one assignment but not my only assignment according to Genesis 17 and verse 6 this is a word that I have received in my spirit for you it says and I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee it says and kings shall come out of thee there is no room for weakness and mediocrity by the way let me tell you you can prosper and serve God with the dignity of kingdom integrity if you fall by the wayside in serving God it is not the presence or absence of money it is something about the condition of your heart are we learning already now let's start very quickly it's a prophetic service we have a proper series that I'm going to be taking and we'll have the time it's a three-part series we'll deal with it extensively across boards but tonight i just want to open us up to a few things and respond to that burden that god has put in my heart let's define a few things because you will be surprised how many believers are failing financially simply because they do not even understand what they are dealing with the average believer has not paid attention to this subject are we together now I want to define five terminologies very quickly and please I want you to write both in your heart and then on your notes number one let's define prosperity what exactly is prosperity it's a word that seems to carry pungency for many in the body of Christ once they hear the word prosperity they say don't don't bring me as part of that word and for others that looks like the only thing they see in the Bible prosperity what exactly is prosperity the word prosper means to do well simple in the simplest expression the word prosper please write it down it means to do well the word prosper means to excel so prosperity in its in its um in its purest definition has nothing to do with money hallelujah when I was teaching on the power to get wealth, you can get the teaching and listen to it. I taught you, if you recall, that in the kingdom, there are five levels of prosperity. Are we still together? And that when the believer approaches the subject of prosperity, you do not approach it like one who is an unbeliever. There are five levels of prosperity and God expects and insists that you prosper in all five areas for you to truly be prosperous the kingdom's way number one very quickly in order of priority is your spiritual prosperity i'm just doing a recap to guide our understanding again number two mental prosperity number three bodily prosperity your health and vitality number four financial prosperity now your financial resources and then number five relational prosperity these are the five areas that the believer must prosper in if you do not prosper in all five areas based on the kingdom's definition of prosperity you are not prosperous let me repeat again spiritual prosperity the health of your spirit man your passion and your drive towards God the health of your prayer life your word study life your passion for the things of God number two mental prosperity your mind properly developed and deployed are we together now number three your health and wellness I don't need to tell you again that no matter how wealthy you are in terms of finance if something happens to your body all of that will remain like ashes if you die your money does not go with you you are buried naked and if you if they cloth you all those clothes would turn to ashes 
and dust eventually and all that will be left are the bones of whoever no name doesn't matter are we together now then financial prosperity then finally relational prosperity so in the kingdom you are only said to be prosperous if we can see captured in your life these five dimensions of prosperity let's define the next terminology very quickly riches please write that word down what does the bible refer to as riches hallelujah please write riches simply means abundant financial resources riches abundant financial resources abundant financial resources now in ancient times they didn't use money like we use so whatever it is that represented money for them in those days if you had abundance of it you were believed to be rich whether it was cattle whether it was um, gold whether it was whatever it is riches in our world now will be defined as abundant financial resources number three wealth this is a very key definition there is a big difference between wealth and riches while riches is concerned with abundant resources wealth has to do with the systems that guarantee the continuity of those resources there is a big difference between riches and wealth let me define wealth for you now please write wealth is abundant financial resources plus the systems that guarantee replenishing the difference between a rich person and a wealthy person is one person has abundant financial resources that can come through whatever means including inheritance but a wealthy person has financial abundant resources and has in place systems that guarantee replenishing so for a wealthy person there is a way to perpetuate wealth are we learning now so when we say you are rich it means whether by inheritance or by whatever means godly of course we are speaking as believers you have access even if it's for a short time to financial resources but when we talk about a wealthy person don't forget you have abundance of financial resources alongside systems that are put in place so you can see by this definition that there might be many people who are rich but truly very few people who are wealthy this explains the whole balloon success where people are up today down tomorrow because most times in our world we interpret wealth wrongly once you have abundance of financial resources whether it came by corruption whether it came by stealing whether it came by fraud we just believe that you are wealthy no wealth has to do with the presence of abundant financial resources plus the systems that guarantee continuity are we together the fourth definition very quickly poverty I know you don't want to write it but just write poverty <laughs> someone is already saying god forbid it's not with my hand out right we are defining poverty what exactly is poverty are you ready poverty refers to the absence the absence of financial resources the absence of financial resources and then the absence of the knowledge and the intelligence that guarantees productivity the absence of financial resources number one then the absence of the knowledge and the intelligence that guarantees productivity this is the definition of poverty so if your definition of poverty is only limited to the absence of money or financial resources you did not define it well it is both the absence of the substance finance and the absence of the knowledge and the intelligence that is required to be productive is someone learning already one last time that poverty refers to the absence of financial resources and then the absence of the knowledge and the intelligence that guarantees productivity 
let's define lack you will be surprised now to know that there is a difference between lack and poverty the same way there is a difference between riches and wealth now lack talks of insufficiency lack talks of insufficiency inadequate resources to meet your needs especially when required hallelujah someone in lack may not necessarily be poor the problem of someone in lack is not the absence of financial resources it is that when you suffer from lack you almost always do not have the financial resources when needed it may eventually come but at the point where it is needed it is almost not there you see that many people are not poor but many people are in lack and i taught you when i was teaching the power to get wealth that one of the advantages listen carefully the advantages of uh, one of the advantages of financial um prosperity or abundant resources is that it is available when needed if it is not available to solve the problem then it is of no use are we together say for instance you need x amount of naira or dollars to solve a medical situation that is life-threatening say for instance you need just for let's say a million naira to solve a medical situation that that person may die without it and now you are not a poor person at one point or the other money comes but at the point where it is needed it is not there no matter how you convince yourself you are in luck hallelujah if the person dies and hundred million comes in next week you are still in luck you see that the goal is not to be in luck the goal is to have supplies that provide for sufficiency when needed when needed the person who has 500 naira that always appears at the point of the need will be more effective than someone who is anticipating a hundred million and may wait 10 20 years you you can see people who can beg and suffer and cry and say please someone help me but when you trace their overall financial system there may be some money hanging somewhere that they are still trying to walk around i'm telling you that if at the point of need the resources to meet that need is not there it is called lack hmm. hallelujah so prosperity to do well riches to have abundant financial resources wealth to have riches plus the systems that perpetuate it and allow for continuity poverty the absence of financial resources and the absence of the knowledge and the intelligence that guarantees productivity and then for lack we say is insufficiency in one word that means when you suffer lack you almost are never able to meet your needs when required this is very very powerful hallelujah but since my focus is on poverty tonight, I'd like us to go straight to the point. What are the factors responsible for poverty? Please write. Because the Bible says to preach deliverance to the poor. What are the factors? What are the factors responsible for poverty? For many people, especially in the body of Christ, the moment the subject of poverty comes, it is just to pray against it or pray against spirits and so on and so forth. And while that is important, it is important for us or more important to really examine. And there are seven factors that I wrote here. You will be surprised. Seven factors anybody who lives with these factors at work in their lives must be poor no matter who you are hallelujah are we blessed and anybody who gets free from these seven factors must be wealthy it has not there's no sentiments please try to believe what i'm telling you hallelujah so whilst you are listening to this some of you in your mind you will be looking at your life introspectively you will be looking at your families and wonder so my sincere father my sincere mother my sincere lineage as sincere as they are this is what was responsible for the poverty 
most times people just desire to you know manifest the blessings to prosper and superstitiously they just hope that one day by a way i cannot explain i will suddenly stumble into wealth no it is deception and unfortunately even though respectfully so men of god sometimes we are promoters of these kinds of wrong ideologies so people continue to hope on nothing holding shadows and after many years of frustration they succumb to the temptations of compromise and so on and so forth to preach deliverance to the captives are you ready for this seven please do not forget this for as long as you are alive in the name of jesus christ the factors responsible for poverty this is true for abuja this is true for lagos true for nigeria true for any part of africa true for america europe wherever these are universal factors number one what is the first reason the first factor that is responsible for poverty my emphasis is the poverty of the saints believers in christ in as much as this message is relevant and cuts across religion, culture, my emphasis in this service tonight is to help make a contribution that brings believers for God's sake out of this demon, this captivity called poverty. Number one, ignorance or incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. This is the first reason for poverty in the body of Christ. Please write it and pay attention. Ignorance or incomplete knowledge. Please, if you're writing, underline ignorance and underline incomplete knowledge. Ignorance or incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. Ignorance or incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. This is the first reason why believers, even though they have come into Christ, are not able to manifest the blessing of the kingdom that we claim to have. I have preached again and again against ignorance, that ignorance is dangerous. And then, to my mind, equally dangerous is incomplete knowledge. When people have incomplete knowledge, the equations will always not add up because incomplete knowledge is the sponsor of imbalance. Hallelujah. When your knowledge is not holistic as touching a subject, you will find yourself doing the best you know with what you know. But what you know may not be enough to give you what you desire. Ignorance and incomplete knowledge i give you an instance when you sample an average believer in the body of christ and ask the person what does it take to be blessed for someone he will say anointing for another person he will say seed for another person he will say tight for another person he will say forget about that tight it's a scam for someone else he's going to say work hard that's the key hmm. hallelujah for someone else you will say do business for someone else, you say, meet a financial counselor. All of these seem to be pieces of the truth. But having a piece of the truth may not be enough to produce that result. So ignorance or incomplete knowledge. Ask a man of God, respectfully speaking, Sir, how do you raise money for ministry? And you will hear all kinds of things. The good, the bad, and the ugly sincerely come and ask members to give you money somebody will say bring in someone who will help you raise the money another person will say identify all the rich people and wear them until preach that scripture cry yet saying you know thus said the lord <laughs> through prosperity and so on and so forth and then of course to the more extremes like manipulation and witchcraft and all kinds of things ask an average unbeliever in nigeria what is the easiest way to make money money ritual it's as simple as that they will answer you no matter how dull they are they will answer you immediately and say listen if all else fail just find a goat or a child or a human being be on your way to any place you know where they can conjure all kinds of things and if you think this message is not important wait until the gates of poverty press at you you will be surprised at the level and the shades of compromises that you'll be involved with 
this is true for preachers this is true for parents this is true for families this is true for leaders true for organizations especially churches right from covid because of what happened globally you know there seems to have been a decline and i submit to you that many churches many individuals many organizations have gone through seasons of financial strain and for many they have not recovered till now ignorance or incomplete knowledge of god's financial system there are two reasons why jesus wept in the bible the first is found in John 11:35, when he stood at the grave of Lazarus. The Bible says Jesus wept. And the next verse would say that when they saw him weep, they said, oh, how he loved him. So he wept because of his compassion for John. The second reason why Jesus wept in the Bible is found in Luke chapter 19 from verse 41 and 42. He wept because of the ignorance of the people. The Bible says when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, 42, If thou hast known, even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belong to your peace, he says, but now they are hid from your eyes. So Jesus wept when he saw people like sheep without a shepherd. And he knew that these people would continue to wallow in darkness. Ignorance and incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. Are we ready for the second? Number two, the second reason why men and especially the saints are in financial captivity is i wrote here the absence of value that is needed and useful please write that down the absence of value that is needed and useful not just the absence of value the absence of value that is needed and useful there is a clamor for value in the body of christ and that is wonderful except that you need to understand that the value you present must be needed and useful if the value is not needed and useful most likely you will still remain poor even though valuable so the narrative before now is that once you are valuable there seems to be a guarantee that you will prosper i submit to you by wisdom honesty and the word that that is not accurate there are many valuable people who are poor and sadly may remain so do you know why because the world around them does not need the value that they are providing value must coincide with the law of exchange for reward to happen that means no matter what you are carrying if i do not need what you are carrying for instance if you come to me and you say apostle I want to sell for you baby Cerillac for me. Now, it's valuable, but not valuable for me. Are we together? And if I am your only client, get ready to be poor. You, 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 you get what I'm saying now? Now, that does not mean that baby product is wrong. Simply because you are now surrounded by an individual who does not need what you're carrying. So there are many people who just believe that I am valuable. Unfortunately, their region, their, their, their clientele does not need the value that they are providing. If you are a professional typist, for instance, chances are excellent that by now you may be tending towards poverty. If that is the only value you have to offer. Why? Because time has shifted people and made your value not needed. Hallelujah. If your only value is to teach people basic computer appreciation, chances are excellent you are going to be poor. Because even people in the village now with an Android device, they have learned the things people used to queue in business centers to learn. Am I, am I right on that? The second reason why the saints are poor is that in bringing value to the table, I'm buttressing on point two. They do not pay attention to those around them. That means there is no intelligent problem analysis. They just come up with any value and hope that people, whether they need it or not, will patronize them. Are we together? 
that means if your value is not solving any direct problem that suits the context of your civilization you are going to be poor it's as simple as that number three is someone learning the third reason why God's people especially are in financial captivity is lack of productivity and excellence please write it down I didn't give you a scripture reference for number two you may want to quickly write this down Matthew 25 from verse 24 to 27 there is the reference remember the three people talents he gave one five he gave one um, two he gave one one but the other one was called wicked and unprofitable hallelujah so number three lack of productivity and excellence this is a very important one because this even affects people who are valuable lack of productivity do you know what productivity is please look up let me define for you in simple terms what productivity is productivity is the ability to translate your value into products and services are we together that are packaged and served to a targeted consumer base with excellence that is productivity you are not productive if you are valuable you are not productive if you have refined your value until your value is packaged into products and services that are served with excellence to a targeted consumer base if that does not happen you are not productive you may be valuable but not productive the third reason why believers are poor is lack of productivity and excellence. In Daniel chapter 5, let's read 12 to 14. Daniel chapter 5, the Bible speaking about this gentleman called Daniel, it says, for as, an, as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams, showing of hard sentences, dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. This is not just a man. I hope you know that there were many dreamers, but there was something about this, this gentleman called Daniel. He added excellence to his value. The Bible says, and then was Daniel brought up before the king. Follow carefully now. And the king spake and said, Daniel, art thou that Daniel? which art of the children of captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jerry 14. I have even heard of thee, that the spirit of the gods is in thee, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in you. Now, I don't have the time to read further. I would have shown you that it took more than the ability to interpret the dream for the king to hear Daniel. His composure, his understanding protocol, he kept quiet and allowed the king to speak. And when it was time, he said, oh, king, I respect you, but please let your gift be kept. He told the king, my value is greater than your gift don't bait me with gifts have your reward to yourself nevertheless I will interpret it I am more concerned with problems than money and the rewards he later got was greater than what the king gave him because if he had collected this that's what most people would do so it takes more than being valuable you need to be excellent and excellence would demand rejecting certain temporary rewards to get other nobler and superior rewards are we together for instance when someone is valuable and decides to steal from his master let's say a thousand dollars five thousand dollars and run away whereas that man planned to give him an estate or to make him a shareholder of his company you see the kind of foolishness that many people do and he will run away and someone else will steal what he's told so you see it's two zero now he's back to square zero and he will be angry that they stole what he stole. <laughs> Lack of productivity and excellence. I submit to you that church people need to be mentored to understand the value of excellence. Are we together now? Compromise on quality is prevalent, especially among believers. You give believers projects to handle and you will see all shades of 
compromises and we will cover everything in the name of Jesus and using the guise of similarity of faith. Whether you give them jobs, you give them contracts, most believers do not want to bend over backward to deliver with excellence. And then those who are in positions of authority and influence, who are believers, go through all kinds of pressure. Why will you not give your fellow believer this road? Why would you not give him this contract? Why would you not give him this one? And at the end of it, you will find out that it's the same believers that keep causing pain for so many people because of their lack of, their lack of uh, uh, this thing. I've had that kind of experience myself where you can trust people in the name of believers and say, okay, let me support you with this, handle this project. And it, it, it's a total mess that comes back. Mess with an entitlement mentality on top. Are we together now? And then sometimes you are pushed, you have to make do with unbelievers because the, their, their basis for for relating with you is purely contractual and they know that if they compromise they have themselves to blame so they will give the highest level of excellence there is someone learning the absence you see believers produce something and they cannot go and package it well they will wrap it in one polythene and just write maybe jesus is lord on it now i'm not saying that is wrong and i'm not saying the statement but it's, it's a mockery the name you are putting there should not carry that kind of packaging and sometimes it costs next to nothing it's just ignorance because most times we are very proud we cannot bend over backwards to ask how can i make this happen we fall in the guise of i have the holy spirit the unbelievers don't have the holy spirit but they have a mind that is working and when it was time for moses to have knowledge god sent him to egypt for knowledge even though moses had a covenant with god when it had to do with power and results and anointing he didn't need egypt but when it had to do with the wisdom to understand the cosmos the same thing happened to joseph do you notice that when god wants to give his people secular enlightenment he will always send them to egypt are you learning now many believers are not excellent Someone, for instance, will have a store or a shop and sit down and be claiming, in the name of Jesus, I will be the leading store. You wake up by 10 o'clock and someone will be kind enough to call you and say, our fellowship needs 30 cans of malt. I say, look, I'm, I'm tired. You drag yourself as a man as if you are pregnant and open the shop and then now argue and say, I don't have change. Come back later on. And by five o'clock, you change and say, I am going to church. It's a flimsy reason, flimsy excuse. You cannot hire an apprentice because you want all the profit to yourself. And yet there is somebody all around. He has designed a system 24 hours is available. He put Christian, Muslims, atheists all together. So when it's time for prayer, the other one is there making sure it happens. If it's time for... <laughs> Say productivity. Please shout it. Say excellence. We are very small-minded as believers and we think it does not matter because we compare ourselves from our little backgrounds and we just say, oh, I am making this, I am making that. Oh, I want to go into fishery, I want to go into fish business. And you just leave your fish in the bucket and keep calling people to come and buy it. How many will, will kings come, will I come and reach out into a bucket or, a, 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 you know, Are we learning? Number four. What is the fourth key? The absence of strategic relationships. Please start that one. That is the major reason for the poverty of many. I submit to you. If I am to draw a pie chart and represent all these points, this one will take over 65%. This one, the reason why people are poor. Listen, there are three things if you don't have, you will remain perpetually poor. Number one, value. If you don't have value, have relationships. If you don't have relationships, have character. If you don't have these three things, you have signed a contract with poverty forever. Yes, sir. 
if you lack value you lack strategic relationships you lack character then you are forget about the blessing of the Lord being made manifest in your life so number four write please very quickly the absence of strategic relationships in John chapter 5 popular scripture reading from verse 1 to 7 verse let's look at 7 for emphasis the the man at Bethesda Jesus asked the man how come you have been so long here do you want to be made whole and the man said I have no man that is my issue not I have no strength at least among all the important folks I seem to be better than others but the man who will give me the leverage and his one year or one day translated to 38 years of stagnation because there was no man he did not say I have no skill he did not say I have no strength he most likely was better than somebody do you know what it means for one day to become 38 years and the simple reason is I have no man I have no man there was a crippled man who's had relationships and they came to Jesus's crusade insisting that that man will be healed and when they found out that there was a crowd they said listen we are not going back with this our friend he may not have the power to reach out to Jesus he may not have the energy to shout have mercy on me but he had relationships and they tore the zinc in other words we would discuss with the owner of this venue later on but as far as this man is concerned not for our sake they uncovered the roof the bible says and jesus called it faith not carelessness not wickedness he called it faith that means relationships can enhance your faith strategic relationships I submit to you ladies and gentlemen this is where unbelievers cheat believers hands down because we have not learned the value and the excellency of strategic relationship the average believer will not pay attention to invest in quality destiny defining relationships you know why because we we feel that we are immune with factors and systems of advantage like favor, like the Holy Spirit. And sometimes you hear us brag and say, I don't need any man. If you are saying that to describe the sovereign power of God, you are right. But if you are saying that to mean that on earth here, you do not need anybody, go and think again. That God had to send an angel to come and carefully discuss with a woman to make her womb available for Jesus to arrive. Look at all the men that played strategic roles in his life. From the prophets, Simeon the prophet, Anna the prophetess, Simon of Cyrene, Joseph of Arimathea, the owner of the donkey that he, 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 he carried for triumphant entry. How could Jesus do without men? As far as he was upon the earth, he needed men. As God, he may not need men, but as a man, he needed men. Let me remind you again that I have taught you that all blessings come from God through men to men. Please say it after me. All blessings come from God through men to men. If God says yes, and on the earth men say no, your yes will remain in the realm of the spirit. I guarantee you. There are people today who may not have as much value. When you look at the level of the financial blessing in their lives, it looks unfair because realizing that they may not have so much value, they turn to relationships and they master the art of bringing strategic relationships. There is a difference between strategic and parasitic relationships. I'm talking about strategic relationships. Hallelujah. If someone comes to unduly oppress you, you do not know anybody in the police force who can help you. If someone comes to speak, you do not know any, no, it's wrong, it's dangerous. It can keep any believer poor. Respectfully speaking, there are men and women of God today, there are business people, very easy things cannot be done. You want to register a company, and there is no lawyer that believes in you who can say i love you so much you just bring what is needed my own part as a reward i leave it 
because you did not pay attention building relationships relationships are not gifts they are investments waiting for people to just like you for nothing is a waste of time you've heard me say it here unbelievers a man who is a billionaire will leave america to nigeria to come and celebrate a rich man's two-year-old son let's be honest is the two-year-old son his mate and you see him playing with a baby baby how are you and the baby is not even saying anything and because he was represented there in that birthday celebration they will discuss something that will translate to millions and billions of dollars while believers are there fasting calling the man's name on the ground writing it on paper and say except it's not my god you must give me this job someone has left and is there represented no, 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 no shouting carelessly. Let me say this. Listen, listen, listen. Please make sure as you listen to me, you behave yourself. Because sometimes when we get excited, we can say all kinds of things. This is a house of discipline. So celebrate the word, but don't start shouting, tell them or misbehave. Please, let me say this as a disclaimer. We are very disciplined people in the name of Jesus. Is someone learning? Relationships. I have learned and I have seen in my life that who hates you does not matter. But ladies and gentlemen, in this wicked world, who loves you? Who loves you matters all. Oh. Esther, you will remain in Shushan until you have an uncle that can present you to the king. But if the king loves you, you can become queen immediately. Joseph, you can remain in the prison even though you have the ability to interpret dreams if the king does not love you you remain a prisoner there we live in an arrogant world that trivializes men what is there i have god i don't need any man that is true there is a there is a place for that when you are describing the sovereignty of god but when you are dealing with the dynamics of the cosmos, please do not listen to that wrong teaching that you do not need men. Let me tell you, men are so important huh, that there are gatekeepers who even though they are not believers, you cannot cast them. There are men that are uncastable. If God wants you to pass through that gate, he will grant them favor with you. But as far as they are concerned, praying them away is a waste of time. When a man's ways pleases the Lord, is that in your Bible? He makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. There are some people, if they are not at peace with you, you will go to heaven, but you will suffer on this earth. It's the truth. This is what some of our loved ones did not know. This is what some of our great people, as I'm talking to you now, some of you came from families that that were mad by poverty i am showing you that these were the rules that our loved ones broke when other people were building relationships they were there gossiping and ignoring people and saying how can this small boy be rich instead of you to be close to him because he can help you now the small boy is the one who can pay for your medical bills and unfortunately every old person around you does not have money what do you now do respectfully there are men and women of God who have insulted members and shouted at people if you are rich you carry all your money and they insult them whereas there's building project coming whereas there are all kinds of things coming then when it is now the time you say if you are if you have money in this church and you are not giving and the people say no 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 you insulted us I go you insult me and insult everything I have so as I go I go with everything I have relationships you come to church you ignore the person sitting at your left and right they say turn to your neighbor you are frowning simply because you do not even know whether that person is the answer to your tomorrow's prayer not even today you see let me tell you the truth please look up we live in a world where we like glitz and glamour once you see someone sit close to you and there's nothing wrong with everybody has their, their you know the way they see life but some of the greatest gifts and the greatest helpers will come in packages that you will need your spirit man to help you discern. Someone may be seated close to you. He may not have money, but he's the one who works for the one you are looking for. And let me tell you, Nigerians, we know this. 
the person who is an aide of a wealthy man is more is more um, in a position of honor and opportunity than even some of the directors in the company because that is the one who will serve him tea that is the one who will serve him bread and he can smuggle your issue to his ears quickly whereas somebody is still saying well minuted they sign it there and throw it away and pray that the wind evil wind does not push it from that table to the trash as funny as what i'm saying is there are many of us right now the answer to your prayer is what you are hearing you have ignored many people nobody is worth your commitment we have this sense of self-sufficiency no it does not matter you are making a mistake a big mistake I'm not teaching human worship please don't get me wrong there are people because of the abundance and because of the way they have suffered they will want to subjugate people and turn them to slaves please this is not what I'm teaching but I am telling you that in the lifting of men even financially men have a role to play I've asked you this question many times let me ask you one more time think don't talk is there someone in your life right now who you can call for help and the person will help you without thinking twice just think is there someone right now as you are watching me let's assume for instance that you needed let me use a realistic figure maybe two hundred thousand five hundred thousand a million naira is there someone in your life that has been helped by God who can say for your sake I'm on my way to your house if there is none I guarantee you you are sitting on a time bomb because according to the law of time and chance according to the law of life sooner or later even if you are Jesus you may not be able to carry the cross alone powerful Jesus needed men to help him it is foolishness to believe that for the rest of your life you will not need any man no hallelujah investing in relationships may look costly you will bend over backwards it will sting your ego but the profit that comes from that investment is unbelievable do you know that there are people who do not exactly have work but they are never broke because they are around strategic relationships they greet they hang around when the meeting is happening they are standing outside their job is to just support are you tired okay just bribe me orange quickly and they run and you will think that they are wasting time except that when it's time to share everything even if it's the crumbs from the table it will get to them one day someone will just look at them and say you've been very effective come and take this car and that's it come and take this house and that's it don't expect people to pay attention to you when you have not communicated honor and you have not listen every man's need is his point of contact learn this every man's need is his point of contact if i am thirsty the person who brings me water is the person i pay attention to for that moment are we together many believers do not invest in strategic relationships and then they want astronomical returns for nothing is fraud are we together that means God loves everybody, but you don't invest in your relationship with him. I'm using God since it's universal. You don't invest in your relationship, in worship, in prayer, in word study, and then you suddenly want to have the same ministerial opportunities, the same access to the great. It does not work that way. Time is the seed for intimacy. When you sow time, you get back a harvest of intimacy. It's only a foolish person who will bring everybody into your home, your inner chamber. Watch this now. In many houses, you have, you know, maybe the veranda outside. You have the living room, maybe a number of the living rooms. And there are private parlors. You have bedrooms. There are people who, if they come, they are going to wait outside. You don't hate them. But that is the level of the relationship. They have not made the kind of investment you, you suspect that it will be a risk to expose them to your living room. There are others who may come and you can leave them there. But do you know there are people who can even come to your house and while you are in your kitchen, they can enter your room. Is that true? And sit on the bed and be talking to you and you are not afraid because of the depth of relationship. 
I ask you one more time, who in your life have you invested so much in them that they look at you and say over my dead body that they hear that this person's house just went down it was raised down by fire and they say while we are discussing where you will be i've paid for a house for you a three-bedroom flat relocate with your family and stay there before we know what is done i'm praying for you that this wisdom key will work in your life I'm praying for you that in the name of Jesus, you will not make the mistake that those who have gone ahead of you have made. Yeah. Are we together? The absence of strategic relationships. I have no man to speak for me. I am skilled. I am gifted. I'm an IT consultant. I am gifted. I can do this. I'm a real estate, um, you know, expert. I am this and that, but there is no man to speak for me. There is someone who can speak for you everywhere. You must have the discernment to know them and you must have the, the, the humility to invest in their lives. The Bible says, give a portion to seven and then to eight. It says, for you do not know the evil that will come upon the world. In other words, scatter your human relations investment. You do not know who can be used by God to help you. Are we together? One day you'll see a weak woman that may not seem to have any power, but you'll be surprised the kind of people who honor her. And she can call someone and say, please, can you make this man a director? Mama, do you trust him? Yes, and that's it. No interview, no nothing. Hmm. Number five. Are we learning? The fifth reason why people are poor, especially believers, is bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment. Bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment. Or the absence, for an easy expression, of spiritual empowerment. Many have not learned that there is a spiritual dimension to genuine lasting wealth. There is a spiritual dimension, I repeat, to genuine lasting wealth. It is called the power to prosper. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. The Bible says, but thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore unto your fathers as it is this day. God can give men power to prosper. God can give men power to prosper. And many have rejected that grace. Many have rejected that impartation. There is an anointing that comes upon a man that primes your mind in an unusual way to think, coming up with witty inventions and ideas. That anointing translates to favor, attracting people, attracting circumstances, attracting opportunities. The bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment and I'm happy you came to church tonight because you will not live without that grace in the name of Jesus I repeat that you will not live without that grace that that grace will come upon you the same way the Holy Ghost came upon Jesus it will mantle you that when you leave this place you will be able to define the kinds of anointings that are on your head in the name of Jesus can I give you the remaining two? Number six, the sixth reason why people are poor and remain poor and sadly may remain poor is impatience. The sixth impatience, Proverbs 13, 11. Impatience. Let's read together. One to read. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished the bible says but he that gathereth by labor shall increase let's read one more time wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished but he that gathereth by labor one of the major reasons why people become poor is they want to become rich fast god gives speed but he does not rush men there is a difference between rushing and speed. Are we together? The difference between rushing and speed 
is the same difference between throwing a thing up and allowing it grow when you throw a stone up or you throw a plant up imagine that i hold this flower now or a, a plant and i throw it up because i want it to be tall fast will it come down absolutely but if i water it and allow it to grow what happens that growth remains sustained and it remains sustained because it is connected to source there are many people who want to become rich overnight and don't get me wrong God can bless people and turn your your morning to to rejoicing overnight after an extended period of training it is the manifestation that is overnight not the training please listen when you hear somebody tells you I got blessed overnight find out the training process for instance the Holy Ghost came suddenly but the training was not suddenly three and a half years of training for a sudden manifestation of the spirit so you find someone in the school of wealth in the school of the spirit the school of kingdom prosperity for a long time and overnight God opens the doors but I assure you I'm, I'm speaking especially to my generation because we have an obsession the moment it looks like you want things to happen very fast and many of us have mismanaged what God has given us and brought ourselves to perpetual penury do you know that the pressure to get rich fast can be an addiction look up please the same way you can be addicted uh, taking uh, you know drugs uh, cocaine and all these kinds of things there are people who are addicted no matter what God gives them they want to see how they can make it fast and some is because of pressure because we use physical things around to define the presence of faith so if I see a Jeep if I see a duplex some mansion somewhere I see you flashing designers all through most likely you have faith I have taught you it is not accurate serious people don't think like that are we together impatience Say in the name of Jesus, I destroy the spirit of impatience. Yes, sir. And Jesus increased. Luke 2 52. He grew. He increased in wisdom. He increased in stature. He increased in favor with God and with men. This is true for ministry. This is true for business. This is true for leadership. This is true for personal finance. There is the law of process as powerful watch this as powerful as the word incarnate was when he entered the womb of mary you would think jesus should develop in one week after all the father wants you know believers to be saved mary had to go through the natural course is that true of carrying a baby when elisha prophesied to the woman in shunem he said according to the time of life there are things that when God wants to help you, he will grant you patience to endure. He will not necessarily fast track the process. Because there are things, the lesson you learn on the journey is greater than what you obtain. In fact, it is what maintains what you obtain. So the Bible says, wealth that is gotten by vanity. Unfortunately, there are many people today who are wealthy. They cannot defend their wealth because it did not come by growth so they mismanage it you find young people mismanaging their parents wealth and inheritance in one year two years you find out that a, you know a wealth estate that was built over 20 30 40 years diminishes in less than two years because they handed it over to children who did not have the mental constructs to maintain it please refer to my message redefining inheritance listen to it very carefully redefining inheritance i teach there that there are five kinds of inheritance that every father every leader every superior must transfer to those who are coming and if you don't you have destroyed the generation coming money and physical things is the least and the fifth of that inheritance the first and the highest inheritance you can give any man is your convictions your convictions is transferable that is what made you you 
Now, in, in Africa, we believe that loving children means giving them access to anything, anyhow, when they want, without training. After all, is my child. So we do not have third, fourth, fifth generation. There are very few regions in Africa and Nigeria that can perpetuate wealth. Because you have a lot of young people who are careless, they just tumbled into millions and billions and they waste their parents' estates there are people who, when the owners, the people who started that wealth journey, as soon as they die, the, the entire wealth does not even reach two years. Imagine if the prodigal's father, the prodigal son's father, handed over his entire estate to that foolish boy. He, he, st he still would have finished. I hope you know that. I'm not calling him foolish as an insult. It's a description. He was foolish. Look at the things that he did. As soon as he got the money, he ran away. He lost relationship with the father. There is no record of him contacting the father to say, how are you? I'm away, but just to let you know, you are still my father and I appreciate you. You see that? He left and there were wicked friends that were waiting for him already. And they started spending the money. Question, where were the friends when he was with the pigs? There are friends called friends for food. I resist them from coming to your life. Yeah. What are they called? Friends for food. As soon as it arrives, here they come. As soon as the contract arrives, here they come. <laughs> you know, I prayed for you. You will be surprised. I just did not tell you, but I know, I know that it, if not for my prayer, you will not get that contract. And then they now say, oh, they hear a siren and say, police, are they, what are they coming here for? On their way going. The Bible says a friend is made for adversity. A friend that cannot stand with you through is not a friend indeed. Is someone learning? Unfortunately, some of us, those are the kinds of friends we like because they have mastered the art of singing your praises. They sing you to penury. You are lazy, they still clap for you. You're unserious, they still clap for you. Prayerless, they still clap for you. So impatience. I pray that you will have the grace to be patient. In the name of Jesus Christ, the grace to be patient. Isn't it incredible that most times it's people who do not have money that have over bloated demands of what life should deliver immediately. If God allowed us to read some of the prayer requests, yeah, I'm sure some of them I will run away first. You know how Moses ran away from that, that serpent? Because you will be surprised. Someone who may not have anything will just write, these are my prayer requests. Number one, an SUV, 100 million. A house somewhere in Maitama or Sokoro. 300 million or 1 billion. God, you can do it. And the person who is, you see, God is just looking. Angels too are looking. You know, the spirits of just men, everybody's looking. What kind of a believer is this? Yes, sir. Are we together? Say impatience. Please shout it. Say impatience. Listen. If you wear tomorrow's cloth today, you walk naked tomorrow. If you eat tomorrow's food today, hunger would disgrace you. You can move gradually with gallancy and make up your mind that when you leave a realm, you've left it forever. Don't let impatience take you somewhere you are not supposed to be. You don't have the money yet. You are flying business class. Everything is shouting wrong, wrong as you are seated there. Your clothes, your attitude is saying you are not supposed to be here at this time. It's not an insult because you do not, listen, if you get there by growth, you should have learned the protocol of maintaining that place. Are we together now? You go and pay for an expensive hotel simply because a breakthrough came. You don't know how to open the door that is there. You don't know how to use the toilet that is there. You don't know how to do anything. You just stand there and everybody thinks you are enjoying. You are stranded in that room because your level should not have brought you there. Now, while you are laughing, I want you to pay attention. It's just an example I'm giving. I'd rather walk with Jesus patiently this is even true for ministry 
there are projects that many there is a difference between faith and foolishness let me tell you process builds capacity there are things I would never do if God has not built me I'm not ashamed to move gradually after all the mission is him are we together there are people who have come up with over bloated projects and right now they are in debt finances is not the devil you just get up from one small room and you want a duplex overnight question can you maintain it you buy a car of hundred million from you know entering public transport do you have about 10 percent to 15 percent of the value of that car because any car you buy you must have a cash flow that can afford between 10 to 15 percent the value of that car for its maintenance are we together yes sir there are meetings you should politely reject because those who will be there will put pressure on you are we together now yes you should just polite as a way of not disgracing yourself you may be invited for courtesy's sake but they invite you and everybody there in hope that you will spend money and since you know that you may not have them just politely impatience the church of the Lord Jesus Christ let us obtain grace to be patient the Bible says follow them who through faith and patience faith and patience faith and patience don't go around claiming you are going to raise dead bodies you just started ministry you just had an encounter you got born again six months ago yes you are praying every day but it takes time the day a real spirit will appear to you that is the day you will know what happened to the sons of Skiva. You, you know most people just talk you just go and gather a whole family that has generational causes and you just now you are a believer in christ yes but remember, I taught them in Zaria that believers must be trained to come into maturity. Are we together? Even the disciples, while they were being mentored by Jesus, Jesus, there were some things they could not do. Hallelujah. You hear that there's an expensive fundraising going on somewhere. You just go and find yourself there and they keep you in front. You don't know the meaning of, being, of sitting in front there at the fundraising because if you, if you grew into that realm, you would have learned what that meant. Now they clap for you while you were coming and you didn't even know what that meant. They now said, okay, it's time and they've handed the mic to you. Out of pressure, you say, well, on behalf of me and my company, I donate 10 million. And the people sit there, those who know you are surprised. 10 million. Are you going to sell your family? Where are you going to raise that money from? Listen, let me submit to you. Listen to me. Please listen. Love but listen. That also includes coming out to make pledges in church. I am not against giving. But let me tell you, there are many foolish coming out to make pledges that wisdom is saying go back because you are putting your family in trouble. There are certain levels of giving you should discuss with your spouse as a responsible man. This, don't just sit down and everybody is happy and you just stand up as a man and you just come and stand. What are you donating? You say my house. Your wife sits down there shocked. You are donating your house? All because of pressure. I deliver you from it in the name of Jesus. Can I tell you, when Koinonia started, listen, when Koinonia started with a crowd of people and even though I had the ability to buy at that level whatever car I wanted, I would still, I, I had a bike. It was, it was bike that would carry me. Miracle service. I would dress, then I used to wear a lot of suit. You know, you wear that and then you see me with my Bible and you are hearing a bike, you think they are dropping someone. It's Joshua Selman that has arrived. Did it, question, did it stop the sick from being healed? You see, when people know you are honest and serious, they will support your growth. Well, when people know that you are a liar, they will do everything to make sure you learn the lesson. Impatience. Let me give us the last. Laziness. It's as simple as that. Laziness. Laziness. Proverbs 20 and verse 4. Jesus freedom from financial captivity let's read verse 4 one to read the sluggard 
will not claw by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg in harvest and have nothing. Let's read one more time. The sluggard will not claw by reason of the cold. Therefore he shall beg in harvest. You know the meaning of this? That means the person will say, well, honestly, um, Abuja is too hot. Abuja is too cold. Are we together? There's terrorists, there's, there, there, there's terrorism, there's kidnapping everywhere. I can't risk my life. No. It should not be. The Bible says he will beg in harvest. Hallelujah. Now, can I give you five keys very quickly? Remember, it's a prophetic service. When we'll be doing finance proper as a series, we'll take time and go in depth and deal with certain things. But my focus is on poverty today. I have listed, maybe I should do a recap. I always like to recap so that those who are slow would follow. Number one, ignorance and incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. The factors responsible for poverty. Two, the absence of value that is needed and useful. Number three, lack of productivity and excellence. Four, the absence of strategic relationships. And I told you to note that because it is a major factor that can define your wealth or poverty. Five, bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment. Six, impatience. Seven, laziness. There are many young people in our world today who are lazy. An old man of 60, 70 years is sitting outside in the morning. A young man is also joining him to sit down outside. Are we together? Yes. It ought not to be so. When a young man stretches himself, you will not die. Listen, especially for our gentlemen in this ministry, in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, every spirit of laziness, it doesn't matter where it came from, and it doesn't matter how long it has stayed. In this service, be delivered forever. My concern is everybody, but particularly the gentlemen. Don't sit down and say there's nothing to do. Stand up. Go, if you don't have a job, go and seek counsel somewhere. At least invest your day properly. Don't sit back watching movies, watching football. Allocate time for it, but know that your destiny is at its infancy. Are we together now? Or hanging around other people who have certain leverage and then you are there, you know, parasitically speaking, you are not even there to contribute. You are hoping that one day you'll get something whereas you are not making the most of your life. I detest laziness as a person. And I can tell you, lazy people will not go far. Lazy people will most likely be corrupt people. Lazy people will most likely want to do money ritual. And sincerely, both corruption and money ritual takes hard work. Do you know the creativity it takes to steal? That, that creativity can start a business. Money ritual. Because you will not go in the morning or afternoon. Most likely it's in the night. The risk wild animals before you get to the bush. That is the same courage you need to market your product and stand. You must prosper in the name of Jesus. For as long as you are under this grace, you must prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity. Now, five keys to be free from financial captivity. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Someone's deliverance has been established. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Number one, a heart for God. A heart for God. The first key to be delivered from financial captivity. You notice I did not talk about the spirits of poverty because they have a special section. We're coming there. But if I bring the spirit of poverty, many of you will not listen to anything again because that is the only excuse you have been using. The spirit of poverty is following me. I'm showing you what has been attracting it to follow you. These things I listed is what it saw that made him come, come to you. A heart for God. Second Chronicles 26 verse 5. Second Chronicles, let's read together. Second Chronicles 26 verse 5. Ready? Read. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah 
who had understanding in the visions of God. The Bible says, and as long as he sought the Lord, businessman, God made him to prosper. Let's read the last sentence together. And as long as he sought the Lord, man of God, God made him to prosper. Listen, I respect all kinds of opinion, secular opinion, and, and all of that. But I am teaching you from a biblical standpoint. Hear me, believers. There is nobody who negates God, ignores God, and would have prosperity that will be balanced and holistic. It's a lie. You may have money, but the many other gaps in your life that only the size of God can fill will bring you back to an unfulfilled life. There are many people who have abundant financial resources, but you cannot, the lives that they live is ugly. You will not want to live that life. They live in fear. They live in doubt. They have all kinds of, they can have 12 kinds of names around the world. Depending on where they are, that's what they call them. Simply because they have to create a system of falsehood. Falsifying everything to survive. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and added no sorrow with it. Are we together? Yes. A heart for God. Not the kind of wealth that comes at the expense of your salvation. Not the kind of wealth that comes at the extent you sacrifice everything in your life family there are people who give loved ones distant relatives you know for rituals do all kinds of things for money you find this happen in our world all over terrible shouldn't be a heart for god it is my prayer for you that the kind of money that will make you leave god i am praying this for your sake may it never get to you yeah. hallelujah do you know the kind of money that makes you leave god the kind of money that makes church look like a nuisance. I am busy. The kind of money that makes your family look like a, an interruption to your life. One year, you've not seen your wife, you've not seen your children, you don't care. Because you are looking for money. Your children start calling you uncle. Because they do not know whether you are their father or not. I'm not being sarcastic. The kind of wealth that will introduce you to groups and demonic satanic fraternities. To now begin to practice all kinds of occultic things. Things that are outside of the value that you were raised by. There are many of us here, God has brought this word to caution you already. Because you are threading parts, you are just seeing everybody wealthy. Listen. Be careful. Make sure you vet people's relationship with Jesus before you start clapping for the money they have. You do not know what has died. There are people who have sacrificed their destinies, covenanted with Satan. You are just seeing the money. They may even help you with it. When we teach here about kingdom prosperity and deliverance from poverty, we are teaching that because God is able to bring people out and it is to give you the convenience to be able to serve the purposes of God with dignity and integrity. That God will raise people in this ministry, multi-billionaires in all kinds of global currencies and yet you love the Lord. Time for worship, your heart is still inclined. Do you know there is nothing as powerful as seeing a wealthy man worship God? That is a sermon on his own. That you see a wealthy man just saying, Lord, you are the reason why I have all that I have. Do you know how many people get inspired by that worship? That if this man who is the director of this conglomerate, the group general manager, having everything life can offer from a physical standpoint, can still roll on the ground before God. You're watching the wife roll on the ground and the children too roll on the ground. What are you still standing for? You will join them and roll on the ground too. If God has helped that man and he's still rolling on the ground. Remember the Bible calls us living epistles. Are we together now? It is a beautiful thing to see blessed people serve the Lord. That you see somebody who is a multi-millionaire. 
there are very blessed people that God has helped in this ministry thank God for it and sometimes I am humbled seeing how they stretch themselves to serve the purposes of God that is a lesson any kind of wealth that makes you too big for God is nonsense it's only a pit you are digging so that you enter there if Jesus the King of Kings left his throne and he came and he died for man there is nobody who will give a flimsy excuse and say, I am too rich to love God. I am too rich to worship God. I am too rich to serve God. I pray for you again that any kind of money, let me repeat it to your hearing. Ladies and gentlemen, any kind of money, financial resources that will take you away from the Lord Jesus Christ or is already taking you away from the Lord Jesus Christ, may it live your life. respectfully speaking that includes certain jobs there are certain jobs that is an attack on your life and it is not for me to sit down and impose upon you but i can tell you this one thing whatever requires you leaving jesus to obtain it is a waste of your time please believe this i do not know how men survive without him I do not know how people rise without him. There may be many other formulas, but I can only show you that which the Bible provides and that which by the grace of God, he has made sufficient in our lives. Let me tell you the truth. Any kind of money that will require you living Jesus, living prayer, living word study, your Christian integrity and your service unto God to obtain it, I repeat one more time, it is not worth it. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world? You know how wide this world is? That by whatever creativity you gain the whole world and then you lose your soul. I've told him, if there is anything that will ever come to my life in the guise of blessing and it will take your place, my passion and even distract me from my assignment may it never arrive may it never arrive and i'm praying that prayer even as i'm standing here i don't care what kind of money i don't think i'm just speaking nonsense no see if you don't have convictions the devil will bait you into anything there are some of us respectfully speaking i, I don't mean to insult you but we are so cheap anything can take you away from god Someone can say, well, going to church, are you going to eat in church? Sit down there. I will give you 100,000. And you sit down and a word is coming. A prophetic word is coming that will lift you. Something will come. Can money break courses? Can money break yokes? Money can give you a, a home, but can it give you peace on its own? No. We reject the precious things for mundane things. And then eventually we find out that we only had shadows. You are the thirst. You are the stream. You are the hunger living deep inside of me. You are the food that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. You are everything. I'm going to sing that song one more time. Just listen to me. It's a powerful song. You are the thirst. You are the stream. You are the hunger living deep inside of me. You are the food that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. Yes, you are everything. Listen. Can you stand in your office and watch a check of 100 million, 1 billion at the expense of your faith and you close it and shake the person 
and say thank you for your human sincerity but I love him more than that and walk away and allow other people to say you are stupid while God says well done how many of you today will be able to watch money cars houses that will affect your integrity and watch it and say thank you I know that you think I will come and marry you just because of money thank you I know you're a rich man I know you're a great man but you don't love Jesus I've had you insult Jesus I've had you say a lot of things I appreciate your wealth I don't downplay it but I'm, I'm not that cheap I am the daughter of Abraham I appreciate you but I'm on my way going and other people will say is, is your head working well God brought such a rich man it doesn't matter whether he's a wizard provided he has money just no believers have cheapened themselves so much now I don't downplay I'm teaching you on finances and I'm going to pray for you but listen to me for some of you God is speaking to you you need to repent even if it's the devil that says come once he shows you money you're on your way going you will say Lord I'm coming and you're on your way and you'll find yourself in hellfire please money is not everything money is important but Jesus is everything you are the thirst you are the stream you are the hunger living deep inside of me you are the food that satisfies you are provision for the journey of my life koinonia would rather meet outside under a tree huh than to get money by crooks and by pranks for as long as I live and for as long as this ministry serves Jesus nobody will manipulate you to get money or dollars or whatever it is no 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 not under the guise of anything you will give will challenge you to give but not manipulation listen I know what you are hearing is uncomfortable but please just trust that I love you and that I'm teaching you the truth we need to get away especially especially our generation of young people this this way we have cheapened ourselves all because of money I can do anything provided you will pay me kill yes steal yes destroy yes I would join any group remove my heart remove my brain just give me money and we think it's not an issue a generation that becomes so vulnerable to money a generation that worships money is a generation that will destroy its civilization I'm telling you this is what Satan wants you see this happening across the globe and especially in Africa I'm sorry to say this but every bad leader was once a bad child they don't just get into government and start being corrupt no it's been a practice corruption from school malpractice and you go scot-free am I right on that any of it starts graduating like that until now you sit down as a, a, a board member or whatever and all you are thinking about how many politicians think about the people they were sent to serve they may talk and speak nonsense on TV but you know that if you probe sincerely for many and, and I'm not just, I'm speaking globally. We need to have a conscience that loves God. It matters how the money comes, not just that it comes. What shall it profit a man if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? Can I tell you, there are many people who have been lifted by God today because of their heart for him. They may not have known much, but my God, their love for him. It, 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 made, it makes it look unfair if they remain like that. 
and you see God will bring strategic relationships to their life. Somebody who just shows up for that family and begins to lift that family. Someone who just shows up for that company and begins to lift that company. There are people who have almost zero financial intelligence. They don't have anything, but the one thing they have is a heart for God. And you will see that God will bring somebody to say, I've been instructed by God to come and help your family. Number two, what is the second key to be free from financial captivity? Mental transformation. The second key, I'm not discussing it, I'm just writing it. The, the second key, if you are not transformed mentally, ladies and gentlemen, you will never be sustainably wealthy. You can be, you can be rich overnight by someone blessing you either by favor or relationships but sustenance is a product of intelligence and transformation is the reason why organizations cannot manage their resources families cannot manage their resources there are families where the father is working the mother is working the children are working but they are always in lack something is wrong and the problem is not just demons there is a bankruptcy of mental transformation and mental transformation is not a gift. You buy the truth. Are we together? And when you buy the truth, you use it. You, 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 you submit to transformation. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Mental transformation. You will never rise even financially above your mindset. You can receive money overnight. Someone can bless you. But the sustainability of wealth is a product of mental strength the bible says strong men retain wealth i have told you here the easiest part of wealth is becoming it retaining wealth is not luck you can actually have money somebody can bless you maybe some inheritance you see favor can walk around for you that is why you see we give testimonies in, ch in church praise the lord apostle gave a prophetic word and somebody just called me out of nowhere and gave me five million congratulations now wisdom should continue where favor has stopped but because there is no transformation that person will celebrate five million and still be begging after two years are we together favor is not the only thing you need in your life it is important controls the arrival of financial resources but to be able to manage your entire wealth system you need a transformed mind and that will require outsourced intelligence are we together now most people do not invest in strategic mental you know mental work to build yourself go and listen to my teachings on mental transformation i have taught how mindsets are formed and i have taught you that there are certain mental traits you need to not only attract wealth but to sustain it for instance um frugality frugality is a mindset that helps you to maintain the wealth that you have are we together it is clear financially that you don't spend your capital no when you spend your capital, it is wrong. What God gives you, what favor brings is capital. And then it is up to wisdom now to provide strategies for increase. What you enjoy and spend and sit on is that which comes as a result of increase. And even increase has a, sp a formula for spending it. When the people came and ate bread and fish, they littered everywhere and went away. And Jesus the wise, Jesus the transformed, told them, gather the crumbs. In other words, just because I have the power to bring forth, the man who multiplied bread was attentive to crumbs. And the ones who did not have the power to attend, they threw their crumbs away, forgetting they'll be hungry a few hours later. Are we together? Frugality is a mindset alone. The, the quality of making sure that you cut away wastage from your life. The presence of abundance is not a license for carelessness. Many people are too careless. You are in all kinds of groups that are not profitable to your life. Physically and spiritually, cut away from them. 
because he's eating up of your finances, organizing all kinds of pro of 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 of, of, of um, activities that are senseless, completely senseless as far as your future is concerned. Hallelujah. There are many of us, if we are to be honest, God has been faithful in terms of inflow of financial resources. It is because of the absence of mental traits like frugality, mental traits like gratitude, mental traits like honor. I was sharing with them in Zaria and I said, if you develop, if you cultivate a mindset of honor and gratitude alone, you will not be poor your life will be improved and enhanced in a way that will surprise you. Listen, if you are in any kind of relationship and you, do, you feel you don't have enough value to contribute, let me tell you what to bring to the table. Bring gratitude and bring honor. It becomes a sufficient contribution in that relationship. That means if you cannot provide the technical skills at the back end of that relationship, provide gratitude and provide honor. That means you are in a relationship, whether a spouse, whether a business relationship, that seems to look one-sided. One person is the one doing the job. It will remain unfair until you balance it, introducing gratitude. I may not have the technical skills. You brought me in this oil and gas company. I know that I'm not adding anything so much in terms of my intellectual, um, you know, capacity. But just to let you know that I am grateful. Thank you so much for being attentive to my family. Thank you so much for even making me a shareholder in this company. I do not take it for granted. And the board members unanimously will say, no, retain this guy there. He may not be contributing anything, but we like him because you are providing psychological support. That is your value. But where you do not have your intrinsic technical value and then you now garnish that kind of bad picture with ingratitude and dishonor, you're on your way out from wherever you are to the realm of the poor. For some of you, as you are listening to me now, let me challenge you. After I told them again in Zaria over, the, over you know, the weekend, look for five people in your life who have been active contributors, even financially to your life. Send them a very generous, lavish text expressing your gratitude. Daddy, thank you. Don't say I didn't ask you to give back to me. Childish, childish, childish. Don't do that. Or your boss, don't say I'm working. It's not a favor. Mm -mm. It's not whether you like them or not. That you are responsible and you are matured enough to send a text. And I've told you how to communicate gratitude here in Koinonia. The way you communicate, the goal of gratitude is to make the giver perceive that you are grateful. And it is your, your responsibility to invent every expression that makes the giver perceive. Until the giver perceives that you are grateful, you have not yet communicated gratitude. So for instance, if in your world the only way you say thank you is one word, thanks, you are going to be poor. Are we together? It is true. Someone gives you a house, you say thanks. Gives you a car, you say thanks. Pays the school fees of your children, thanks. No. And for people who can disturb, they will send five text messages in 10 minutes. Just to remind you, I'm sure you've forgotten. You were saying you would do a transfer. I know that you are busy. Can I just remind you again? And then when the transfer comes, is by the next day. You now say, oh, I forgot. I saw it. Thanks. You have closed that door. And even though it's the year of open doors, you will be surprised that you use your own hand. The door that prophecy opened, that you close it and stood at the back to make sure that door does not open again. Say amen. Please do it. Listen, I will not teach you what will not produce results. I'm not here to waste your time to just shout amen and go back and return back. No, I want you to return with testimonies and say, Apostle, last week, I sent a text to someone who I worked for. I worked for in 20, uh, maybe 2018, 2017, and I just sent him a text. So just to appreciate you, I was inspired in church today, and I thought to just, just, um, reminiscing on your kindness through the years and this is me expressing my heartfelt gratitude the lord bless you i still recall your kindness the lord increase you the next time you hear a call by 11 30 where have you been are you now walking no sir 
Come and see me tomorrow. That's it. You can drop your prayer request on the ground and dance around it. That's a spiritual principle. Praise and the rest. But if that is the only thing you do, you may be disappointed. Remember, they are called forces of advantage, not one force. So when you isolate one, maybe just the power of praise. You see that? How do you now link up with the person who should help you? Some of you are in business partnerships. You can take the time, convey a meeting. You are not necessarily discussing anything around the business. I just want to appreciate you. And subordinates, don't sit down and be waiting or, or leaders and superiors. Don't wait for your subordinates to say thank you alone. Humble yourself and tell your people thank you. Whether you are a pastor, a father can tell his wife and children thank you. Am I right on that? A leader, a CEO of an organization, don't say it is my company. The Lord gave the word, but great was the company of them that published it. Success is a composite of many factors and you must appreciate the several units that contribute to that success. And do it, do it consistently. Thank you so much. I just called for this meeting to appreciate all of you. This company has experienced astronomical growth. We still have a lot of milestones, but I thought it was very responsible. I was inspired to call all of you together. I appreciate you. You mentioned the units one by one. And you see the people trying to be serious and trying to laugh. They can't believe that their boss is the person who is saying thank you. They can't believe that their superior is the one appreciating them. Let somebody talk nonsense about you. And that's when you will know that you have staff indeed. Because that gratitude, that gratitude plants a jealousy for you in them. That beyond the salary or whatever system of reward you are communicating to them, their love for you becomes concretized by your communicating gratitude. Same thing with fathers. Sometimes you just call the workers within your house or wherever and say just to tell you thank you. Do you know you can give gifts and yet not express gratitude? It is not all about giving money or giving things. That communication articulates your gratitude. It's an assignment I'm giving you. You are a pastor, go back and do it for your leaders. Don't do it every day. Be consistent, but don't do it every day. Otherwise, there is a generation you are going to produce, an entitled generation. That's the Moses kind of generation. By the time you over pamper people, you take away that, that stamina from them. They become children, ever dependent and they feel entitled but there is a healthy interjection of thanksgiving especially from superiors do this as a man of god gather your pastors who labor your workers and let them know that you appreciate them it's not about money it's about your heart and watch what happens and teach your people koinonia global i will teach you gratitude until you get it i i am a recipient of the power of gratitude Someone will always remember you. This man is a grateful man. Who do we look for to be the Nigerian um, representative of this company? Well, he doesn't have that kind of qualification. But remember that the job that we're running is very social. And we need somebody who has this kind of people skill. This man has a very warm countenance. He's a grateful person. And you'll be surprised. You will stand there just looking at your qualification without learning all of these things and having the right mental construct someone who may not be able to speak english very well but he knows how to say thank you very well that's the person who keeps going forward if you believe what i've said shout amen, amen. let me hurry up number three how do you get free from financial captivity productivity write it please the third key is productivity productivity as a man of God you must be productive what does it mean to be productive to be able to package your value your contemplation you know I have defended most people think that men of God do not know anything about money from a from a reward standpoint whether you are a preacher or you are a businessman from a value standpoint you are doing the same thing when you bring value that is packaged with excellence and served to a targeted consumer base even though in the case of 
ministry what ministry you are not selling the value for a price you are motivated by your love for Jesus but the law of compensation demands that every time you dispense value that a reward must be credited to you whether it comes as transactional wealth or transformational wealth in either ways there will eventually be a reward system so if you're a man of God, you don't need to manipulate people. Once you dispense value in truth, it becomes impossible. The people whose lives are changing are not too greedy. Give them time to grow. Let the truths that you are teaching them, let them discern that you love them with all your heart. Let me tell you something I have learned from scripture and even from experience. Can I tell you if you're a man of God, here's a powerful secret. Don't burden members with trying to give you money and do. Teach them, pour your heart. Let them see the heart of a shepherd. Let them see the heart of a father and then allow them surprise you. They will surprise you indeed. Are we together? Because you see, their giving to you will be based on their perception of your worth. So one person can give you a car, another person can give you even an estate and think that it is not too much. As far as the value you brought for them is concerned, say productivity. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that everyone under the sound of my voice becomes productive from today. Productivity is not about business. Productivity is about getting to a point of competence and excellence. If you are a preacher, do your homework, learn the scriptures, put your notes together, your presentation and your communication, make sure that everything is put in place. That is productivity. You are selling something, be productive. Package everything, clean up the environment, be welcoming. You have a company, make sure you brand your impact. Impact cannot be rewarded except it is branded. You see, do you go to the hospital? Do you go to the hospital to eat food, to buy food? No, because the hospital is so branded to let you know that it is a place to attend to your medical needs. Do you go to the filling station to buy groceries? I mean generally I'm standing in front of a pump no because it is so branded your impact must be branded to the point that those who need you know you are there if God has granted you a healing grace let the people know that he has placed that grace upon your life God has granted you the grace for leadership and entrepreneurship you have to brand yourself intelligently productivity number four strategic relationships I've spoken extensively about that. That is the fourth key to being free from financial captivity. Have at least one or two people in your life for a start. And if there's nobody strategic in your life, let me tell you the first place to start. Begin by praying. Then begin by working on your character. Two things. Begin by praying and working on your character. My Bible says, he that wants friends will never have so except you, sh you show yourself friendly. Go and learn people's skills. Years ago, I was so blessed and inspired reading Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. One of those materials that shaped my understanding as far as understanding people's skills is concerned. Until today, even as a man of God, I submit myself across all the faculties of my life to build knowledge. I am a student of knowledge, an unrepentant student of knowledge. Hallelujah. Don't say, I know. Yesterday's excellence is today's mediocrity. Find out what it takes to have, to retain, and improve upon valuable relationships. Finally, there is the power to prosper. You must search for it and find it. The power to prosper. What is the power to prosper? It's a supernatural engracing. It's a dimension of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, a supernatural engracing that comes upon your spirit and comes upon your mind. You see, comes upon your spirit, comes upon your mind, granting you the ability to provide supernatural solutions supernatural solutions, be it in ministry, be it in business. 
the assignment of the power to get wealth is that your spirit man is empowered by it your mind is empowered by it consequently the quality of the actions and the decisions that you take that culminates to superior results and when you produce superior results then it attracts financial blessings alongside many other kinds of benefits. This is the power to prosper. The power to prosper is not some arbitrary anointing that does not have a definition. No. The power to prosper has its jurisdiction. It has an assignment. It empowers your spirit man. It empowers your mind, consequently guiding you to take superior actions, make superior decisions that make you a solution provider, a supernatural solution provider. You know that the power to get wealth is upon you when nothing happens natural again. Preaching becomes supernatural. Business becomes supernatural. Are we together? The communication and the transmission of your value becomes supernatural. And listen to me. That is one of the things you are about to receive right now. The power to prosper. It is truly, it's, it's, a, it's the icing to the cake. Just declaring the power to prosper upon people, not having this foundation will be like pouring water through a basket. You see that now? The problem is not the water. The problem is there is no retainership from the basket because there are gaps. The assignment of all that I've dealt with is to close those gaps so that when the anointing rests upon you now, you see, it is supported by all of this knowledge that you have gotten. There is impossible to listen to what I have said and understand what I have said and act upon what I have said and then remain in poverty. No. You may not overnight suddenly become a billionaire, but I assure you, you can come out of that grave, that grave of poverty, that grave of lack, that grave of begging left, right, and center. I submit to you with every sense of humility. You ignore what I've said tonight. It will be to the detriment of the quality of your life, including finances, because the kingdom does not work on superstition. These systems are exact. They are not my opinions. The things that we have seen, the things that we have heard, the things our hands have handled, even of the word of life, the apostle said, that that is what we preach. You have not learned tonight cunningly devised fables. You are not learning theory that was downloaded from a book. You are not learning the thoughts of one philosopher somewhere distilled with verses and communicated. No. By the grace of God, we may not have everything, but we have something enough to be able to say this is proof that this works hallelujah when God reminded me of this and put this burden in my heart I knew that it was important to share this that financial captivity is a yoke is a curse it should not be in the life of a believer and for as long as you keep magnifying financial captivity and magnifying poverty and giving it a position in your life through ignorance as though this were an impossible mountain to, sur to surmount you can surmount lack and financial limitation financial captivity using these keys there are many others but this is sufficient the assignment of this is to bring you out of the grave are we together that you can give your wife your husband your children your company a quality life that people should not sit down and regret as though cursed simply because they came out of your loins or they came out of your lineage there are many of us right now your past is mad with all kinds of not too good stories and most of them have been credited to financial captivity it's led you into all kinds of lifestyles. It's led you into all kinds of things that are testimonies you do not want to think about. But the Lord is bringing deliverance tonight. Now hear me. As we begin to pray, I will rebuke the spirit of poverty. The spirit of poverty is a spirit that is assigned to individuals the assignment watch this the assignment of the spirit of poverty is to study the extent of your ignorance 
and to build systems around your ignorance that stop you from making financial progress. Let me repeat. The assignment of the spirit of poverty is to study the level of your ignorance. The Bible says no weapon fashioned against us. Weapons are fashioned. Are we together? So when the devil comes sending the spirit of poverty, he does not just attack because poverty like prosperity is, is an effect. It's not a cause. So it doesn't make sense to say Satan stop finances to come to you. It's a, re it's a reaction. What he does is to study your whole financial understanding or otherwise. And he now begins to build systems either through pride or through laziness. Are we together? Or stopping you from having strategic relationships. Everything that can be designed to stop you from accessing the keys that bring you out that is the assignment of the spirit of poverty it now becomes a stronghold upon your mind and upon your destiny making the word of god of non-effect so when you are bringing deliverance to an individual preaching deliverance what you are doing is opening their eyes to see but that influence is still there this is where the assignment of the power of god comes to dislodge that spirit influence this is what you call generational causes. This is what you call familiar spirits. They, and you know because, listen, spirits don't die. So you can think that because your father is 70, 80, or you are 40, 30, 20, those spirits do not feel the effect of the longevity of time. They stay there and they remain until a savior arises. I repeat, until a savior arises, not until time passes. And could it be that you are that savior whilst you are listening to me thank god that you still have a chance to make this right and for some of you who are fortunate to still have your loved ones god is giving you an opportunity right now that you can correct a lot of things there are many of you who have never supported the cause of the kingdom with your finances. Not because you do not want to. It is not even there. There are many pastors today burdened with all kinds of financial yokes. The discussion largely is money, not giving you room to serve God with the dignity of integrity. Hallelujah. Statistics tell us that the top three reasons why divorce happens in marriage is number one, financial issues. Are we together? Number two, issues between spouse. And then number three, external factors. Statistic tells us that these are the top three reasons. Number one, money and financial issues. And don't say it does not matter. There are people right now who have not received their salaries for a few months. And their children are back home. When others are going to school, they will not go. The fact that those children cannot make progress already begins to plant complex in them ready tools for the spirit of poverty to come he will now start suggesting lifestyles and suggesting all kinds of things are we together there are some of us right now when you started your walk with god you chose the path of integrity and character and right now you look back and and, and you are not even happy about what is happening because your hands have been mad in all kinds of wrong things all credited to the absence of finance but we are going to pray the Lord has brought us this word and it's time for you to be free. If you believe that, shout aloud, Amen. Amen. This is my assignment and I will do it with diligence. I will pray, I will speak over your life and see to it that no weapon fashioned against you. It is not the economy that controls your resources. It is your understanding. It is these forces at work in you. Ladies and gentlemen, government will come and go. The great recession once happened in the globe. Every kind of, there are circles of recession that will always happen. You will always find corrupt leaders. You will find honest leaders. You will find godly leaders. You will find satanic leaders interchange hands through the years. Believing that a government will magically come and make you prosperous is being ignorant. Your prosperity is defined by the sum total of your understanding. Are we together? Daniel was a, a believer in the God of heaven who reigned through the dispensation about, of about four to seven kings. Bible history tells us none of those kings could take him out of relevance because he found the key. 
He was not there to look for money, yet he never lacked. Regardless the government, he was still prosperous. Hallelujah. Give your destiny a chance to be blessed. And let me wrap up by saying this. The purpose of financial blessings like I have taught you, money has a threefold assignment in the life of the believer. Number one, financial resources empower you to live a comfortable life. Never forget that. You will never live a comfortable life in poverty. And by the way, poverty does not glorify God. The Bible says, if you being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? God will not use poverty and twist your hand and curse your children to teach you a lesson there are more superior ways to guide you and teach you a lesson and build you and train you are we together now number two the second assignment of wealth prosperity and abundance listen carefully is for kingdom advance so that you can make your contribution as far as supplying financial resources for kingdom activities is concerned the work of the Lord does not just depend on anointing and grace and doctrine. It depends on the availability of financial resources communicated from and through willing hearts who are prosperous. That means the more people prosper genuinely, the more resources can be made available for, financial, for, for kingdom activities. And then number three, the last purpose of wealth and re financial resources is to empower you so that you can be a blessing to a dying world in a definite and a practical way. Listen carefully. Remember that you are not just empowered just for Christians alone. There are many people dying out there. There is a world that needs to see an extension of the love of Jesus beyond prejudices of religion and all of that. And financial prosperity empowers you to be a blessing. Unfortunately, unbelievers are doing this by far better than believers by far better than believers you look at the ratio of charity organizations constructively empowering the poor feeding the hungry clothing the naked what jesus said if you do it is called pure religion those who have not professed jesus are the ones doing it by far better than believers and we have a role to play as far as making our contribution is concerned this is the threefold purpose of wealth for a believer Anything outside this, you are pushing yourself to the corridors of waste, regret, and compromise. Can we pray now? Please rise up on your feet. There are just three prayer points we are going to pray and I speak over your life. The first prayer point is you are going to ask for grace. Please make sure you participate in the prayer. The grace to imbibe this that you have learned in your spirit so that it works for you. Please lift your voice and begin to talk to the Lord. Everywhere, outside, connecting online, lift your voice and begin to pray. The Bible says, now that you know these things, it says, happy are you if you do them. Now that you know these things, happy are you if you do them now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them in the name of Jesus someone is praying open up your heart and cry to the God of heaven I declare that I am a doer of the word the things that make for poverty I obtain grace to make quality decisions that close these doors from my life close these doors from my church close these doors from my business i am ready to be empowered the problem is not the recession the problem is not the 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 the, the, the economy of the nations hallelujah number two i'd like you to pray that the spirit of poverty that spirit that has taken advantage of ignorance or incomplete knowledge and is praying over your finances, praying over your family's finances, I'd like you to decree and declare that by the blood of the eternal covenant, it stops from this night. Is someone praying? Open your mouth and pray. Do not allow yourself continue in lack and want. It is not the will of God and it is totally unnecessary totally unnecessary not with the abundance of knowledge that you have access to 
Someone pray, I rebuke the spirit of poverty. Whether it has been generational, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. You will not find a place in my life. Are you praying? You will not find a place in my children. Pray. You will not find a place in my spouse, not in my company, not in the ministry God has given. Someone is praying in the name of Jesus Christ. All the decisions that are pro-poverty, I come against you and the spirit that influences my attitude, the spirit that influences my decisions, praying upon my ignorance, the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The final prayer point and then it will be my turn to pray for you. I'd like you to pray. There is the power to get wealth. Yes, there is. There truly is the power to get wealth. Please do not take serious anybody who tells you there is no anointing that prospers people. There is the power to get wealth. Let God be true and all men liars. You are going to pray. Father, I've been imparted, I've been anointed before, but the power to get wealth, let it rest upon my life now. Open your mouth and pray. The power to get wealth. God is able to empower men is able to provide a supernatural engracing upon your spirit and your mind that causes you to be extraordinary in producing results results that make you extremely valuable results that attract resources to you results that connects you to the heart of men and help us someone pray someone pray you are about to receive in the name of jesus in the name of jesus let me speak over your life now father in the name of jesus i decree and declare you gave me this instruction to bring this prophetic word as a deliverance in the name of jesus i decree and declare that mantle and that grace that makes for wealth that took ordinary people in scripture and even ordinary people in our day to day and has exalted them bringing beauty for ashes and joy for mourning i decree and declare may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now rest upon your business rest upon your ministry rest upon your household rest upon your career in the name of Jesus Christ by reason of this grace I speak prophetically over you that everything that represents the shame and the reproach connected to poverty I declare that it dies over your life now every family here that has never experienced genuine prosperity is always from poverty to poverty you saw those before you you saw your parents some of you right now and you're about transferring the same to your children in the name of jesus may this anointing intercept that progression intercept that progression in the name of jesus christ the Bible says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. It was not always so. Every failed business here, every dead or dying business, I decree and declare, may help us show up and lift you back. May help us show up and lift you back. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. One of the assignments of the spirit of poverty, I will discuss that when we take the financial series proper. But one of the assignments of the spirit of poverty, please listen to me, is to make you run into debt. One of the major strategies of crippling your finances is to make you get into debt. Now, I know from an economic standpoint, there is good debt, there's bad debt, they say. There is good debt that can be used as a leverage, you know, and bad debt for foiling consumption. I'm not downplaying your knowledge. That is important according to your faith. But let me tell you the most superior ways to not be in debt. For the Bible says, oh, no man, nothing but love. It is a possibility according to your faith. 
you believe in that no problem the wisdom to manage whatever you receive now i'm speaking largely personally i know that corporately many times people would need help from institutions to execute large projects that is corporate i'm talking about there is no reason why you should get into debt personally it's a terrible thing because let me tell you what happens this spirit constrains you and then it forces you to start borrowing money until it becomes an addiction and every time you borrow money it will schedule activities to make sure that money was never used for the reason why it was borrowed so interest begins to pile up while there is no achievement that should bring you that profit there are many churches today that are in debt there are many supposed wealthy people today that are in debt there are many you are not free if you are in debt because it sustains the ability to stop you from sleeping the moment you have abundance plus time plus peace you are truly wealthy these three things must happen for wealth to be established if the only thing you have is abundance of financial resources even if you have systems the goal of these systems is to allow you the time and then peace resources time peace that is kingdom wealth that is true financial dominion that tripartite coexistence of wealth time and peace because these are the three most expensive commodities if you lose time and peace whatever else you got by losing them was a bad bargain are we together praise the name of the lord so the spirit of poverty has made many of us, some of us right now probably are in debt of thousands, millions, billions, and you want to get into more. No. Every time people got into debt from scripture, it was the prophetic that brought them out. The prophetic is mandated with the responsibility of rescue, particularly from financial debt. Alas, master, it was borrowed. It was prophecy that brought it out. The woman who was owing you know, the prophet who died and left his wife in debt, the prophet said, go and borrow vessels, not oil. To borrow means to plead from people, just bring it. And the Bible says he filled it and he said, go and sell it. And now give, you know, pay off your debt and leave off the rest. The first thing the prophet told the woman to do when you are blessed is pay off your debt. Because you can't live in peace when you have debt. That was the prophet's recommendation. Are we together so I want to pray for you if you are in any kind of financial situation of debt whether personally as a family or corporately in the name of Jesus please believe this prophecy between now and December 2023 I prophesy upon you come out of that debt come out of that financial situation come out of that financial situation in the name of Jesus Christ. How will it happen, Apostle? Very simple. The ministry of men. It, there is no magic as to how people come out of debt. It is always the ministry of men. God will send men disguised as systems, disguised as relationships. It is yours to now discern and be ready when it comes. You don't come out of debt by superstition. When prophecy is released, as it was over Samaria, the next thing was men. Even if they are lepers, they will be the ones to use to rescue Samaria. Every time prophecy comes, start paying attention to men. They will come with business ideas. They will come with superior projects. They will come with their well wishes just to bail you out. A show of kindness. Or they will come, somebody can just bless you. Oh, Apostle, I'm owing 30 million. And God gives someone an instruction. I will not give you money, but I give you one of my properties as a gift. You value that property and they say it's 80 million. You are out of debt already. It's up to you now. Let me tell you one of the major ways that God brings people out of debt is through the power of land and its resources. Because it is very difficult for somebody to come and give you one million but he can give you a slice of the earth. And the Bible says, out of the earth comes increase. He says the increase of the earth is for all. He never said the increase of a company. So if everywhere runs to you, go to the earth for your portion. The earth has a portion for all men. This is a strategy. I'm not, I'm not foolish as you hear me talk to you. 
The earth is a universal bailout system that God uses to bring men out of financial troubles. The increase of the earth is for all, it says. That means if they reject you, if you are in debt, there's no guarantee that the increase in the bank, you have a share there. But this earth is a universal standpoint. The moment you are in debt, trust God to use the power of the earth and its fullness as a mystery to bail you out. Hmm. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, let the power to prosper, the engracing that can rest on men and women and program them for extraordinary success. I declare by the privilege of this apostolic and prophetic mantle, receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Be delivered from every financial captivity. Hear me, what your father could not do, what your mother could not do, for some of you, what has never been done before you, I empower you by this anointing, go and do it. Extraordinary results in business, extraordinary results in ministry, in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, many of you will come and stand here and begin to testify of strange financial doors in the name of Jesus Christ and by this anointing everybody mandated to help you especially in this month in this month of April leave May leave June we are talking April I don't know where they are but I can call them by prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ the one who gave power to men I declare this week that is coming I stand by this mantle I call forth strange helpers strange helpers strange lifters in the name of Jesus Christ that by reason of this that you have heard some of you by God you will step into prepared blessings you will be sitting down someone will call you and give you a car call you and give you a house I'm telling you call you and give you a job he has trained you so his hands will not be restrained in blessing you there are some of you who are in ministry God will give people instructions and say they should come and hold your hands and see to it that you never go down again every family struggling financially whether to pay school fees to pay rent to complete building projects or maybe to fund projects that are ongoing in the name of Jesus this week may Ebenezer the helper of men may he arise and surprise you For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. No Jesus, no help. No Jesus, no guarantee for sustainable um, life, especially even in your finances. Listen to me. The first key I gave you to financial abundance is not money. I told you and I've taught you even when I was dealing with the power to get wealth that the first spiritual law that, that, that is responsible for wealth and abundance is called the law of absolute surrender. Not tithing, not giving, not value. In order of priority, it is your relationship with Jesus. I want to make an altar call. There are many of us here who really truly need to make this decision. You need to make it right with Jesus. And to say the primary reason why my family even became victims of these financial vicissitudes is because they ignored Jesus Christ. Perhaps you are the first person who God is giving a chance to correct, to make right what has been wrong. Or you are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've done many things that are wrong. I need to make my way right with Jesus. I have just one minute for you. Please do not wait for anyone to be the first. I'd like you to leave your seat right where you are. As the Spirit of God is speaking to you, come and stand right here and do the same with all the overflows. There has to be someone coming to Jesus. God bless you as you come. Don't wait for anybody to be the first. Make your way to this place. All the overflows, make your way to your LED screens. And those who are following online, here is an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. Koinonia, give them a big hand clap as they come. Thank you. Thank you for saying yes to Jesus. 
Thank you for saying yes to a new beginning. Thank you for saying yes to life eternal. Thank you for saying yes. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Hallelujah. If you're joining them, make that very quickly. And those who are following online, I'm about to pray. Make sure you participate in the prayer. The Lord bless you. Thank you for your courage. If there are any ones coming, please hurry up so that we start the prayer together. Young and old, you're welcome. Come to Jesus. He's able to give you a new beginning and to bring all this crisis to a permanent end in your life. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and he promises to give you rest. This is Jesus for you. God bless you. Let me request all of you in front, please lift your right hand as a sign of surrender to Jesus and then say this after me. You don't have to kneel. You can stand, but if you choose to kneel, that's fine. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time with hands lifted. Say, Lord Jesus, I have heard your word. I believe that you are the way, you are the truth, and you are the life. I believe that you died for my sin, I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I make Jesus my Savior, my Lord, and my King. And I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I declare that I'm a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious people. Thank you because no one can come to the Father except through the Son. They have come making faith declarations. I decree and declare that they are recipients of eternal life. And in the name of Jesus, I call you the righteousness of God in Christ. Receive the grace to live a victorious life. And every cause, every yoke that is as a result of yesterday and not every foundational thing that has trapped your life i bring you deliverance right now in the name of jesus everything that has pressed you even financially by reason of this decision i declare you begin to see the hand of god in your life you go from glory to glory in jesus name amen and thank you so very much please let me request that you quickly move to my right which is your left, you have a word. The counselors will have a quick word with you and then you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them very quickly. Koinonia, is this the best you can do for them? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay, one quick announcement and then we're done. Thank you for your patience. Next week we'll be fasting. Um, We'll be fasting as a family so fast everywhere whatever nation you are in make sure you connect we're fasting um, from six and then we'll end for the sake of the service maybe three o'clock is fair so you can grab something before you come to church and for the children children can break their fast from 12 and that will be fine pregnant women don't worry we're fasting for you in the name of Jesus you just make sure you take care of your pregnancy we're fasting for you and then if you are sick if you have a confirmed medical condition please you may be exempted from the fast but everybody make sure you participate this fast is for our overall health to prepare our heart for what god is bringing next week have you been blessed tonight thank you very much for your patience and your presence please rise as we close the service go and prosper in jesus name I say it again, go and prosper in Jesus' name. Return with testimonies, even financial testimonies. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's share the grace together. When we are done, please greet someone by your left and right and prophesy prosperity over them on your way out in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest with us. Surely, God's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you next week. Jesus, Jesus.
You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, your name is a light that the shadows can deny. Your Everything you have been carrying. This is the month to give birth to it. Your weak beginning will experience dimensions of favor you have never experienced.